How's it going everybody, Jeremy Adrian here, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about Anthem. The VIP demo has been going on this weekend and I'm here to share my experiences with EA and Bioware's upcoming RPG game. I've had some fun with this, but my goodness, the issues from this demo weekend has been frustrating as hell. There's some good, there's some bad, and then there's some ugly to talk about as well. So before I share my thoughts, if you've never heard of Anthem, what is it? Anthem is an open world action role-playing game with shooter mechanics set in a futuristic world where humanity is on the verge of collapse. Players take the role of characters known as freelancers who are sent on missions where they'll interact with other players, collect resources, and take on enemies in this new world. The goal is to defend the Anthem from both the impending storm and the Dominion, a group of antagonists in the game and other local threats protecting the world they know. Players in this demo start out at Fort Tarsus and are introduced to Javelins, this exosuit that will be the main way players do combat, travel, and progress. If it looks like an Iron Man simulator, it is somewhat, and it's hella fun being able to fly in your Javelins, upgrade your weaponry, and there's four types of Javs to pick from, starting out with the Default Ranger, there's the Colossus, the Storm, and the Interceptor as well. So with that, let's talk about the demo and what players could do with it. Players Players start at level 10 and have access to three different game modes. You have Stronghold, which is like a four-player dungeon or raid that offers a lengthy, narrative-driven experience featuring multiple checkpoints and phases leading up to the final boss fight. And then there's Free Play, which lets you explore parts of the Anthem open world, either solo or with other players around. Here you can scavenge for crafting resources, take part in open world events for experience points, and for loot. Finally, there are story missions that showcases the game's main story mode, featuring no cinematics in this demo, but there is voice acting and dialogue and you can either play solo or public group missions, which puts the pieces together to answer questions like, what are we doing here, who are these characters, and who are we fighting in Anthem? On the RPG side of things, progression comes in the form of leveling up your freelancer and this demo lets you get to level 15. All game modes grant you XP and at level 12 you can unlock a second javelin suit to try out a different class archetype style. Your suit is made up of multiple weaponry components and you can customize your loadout with different types of guns, grenades, support gear and more. Your loadout progression comes down to gear rarity. White for common, green uncommon, blue for rare, and epic for purple, but rare is the highest rarity you can go in this demo. There are no direct gear upgrades, so better ones come from loot drops, and increasing the difficulty of your game mode yields better drops. And the other way is to craft them, which needs several materials from your time out exploring the world of Anthem. As long as you've gotten the crafting blueprint or recipe from completing marked challenges during games, you can craft something of a higher quality at the forge in Fort Tarsus. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly from this VIP demo weekend. And let's begin with the ugly. This VIP demo weekend has and is still being plagued by a ton of issues. And still, there are many players who can't even experience a part of or everything that I just described about the game and what it offers. I'm playing this on the PC, and for me, I've had issues with the Infinity loading screen, which pisses me off. In Fort Tarsus, which is the game's main hub and where you launch your game modes or edit your loadout in the foundry, Whenever I try to launch a free play expedition or a stronghold, I'm put in a loading screen that gets to about 95% of the way and then stops. Nothing happens. For minutes, and I even waited up to an hour the first time this happened. To get around it, I had to open up my task manager and kill the demo and restart the game and then rejoin the session or start over. I've also had issues with the audio dying all of a sudden, and restarting the game leads to the endless loading screen issue. So yeah, this demo has been a real patience tester. And while I'm thankful this isn't the full launch of the game, it sure did put some doubt in my mind if EA and Bioware can actually pull off a smooth launch come the 22nd of February. Console players on the other hand are reporting crashes, account eligibility issues, and a lot more. So I've heard both sides of the argument. On one side, players are already bashing the game and are asking for refunds just from the demo itself while other players are saying that this is a good thing it's happening during the demo and not at launch. I sort of agree with both and my thoughts here is that perhaps Bioware should have positioned this differently. Come out straight and say, hey, you folks that pre-ordered, here's a stress test weekend, let's have some fun, bring your friends, and let's break stuff. 
instead of making this a marketing hype tool with the words VIP plastered all over it. Because the truth is, there's nothing VIP about this demo considering all these issues. To be fair to Bioware though, they've come out with an update acknowledging the ugly side of this and hopefully they get a fix for most of these issues and if you're lucky enough to not encounter them, there's a real fun game underneath y'all and I'll get to that after we address the bad. Let's start with Fort Tarsus, the main hub, and there's two things that stick out like a sore thumb here. Movement speed in the hub sucks. You apparently have a sprint by tapping the shift key, but it makes no difference. I like the design of the place, but the novelty runs out real fast considering how often we're here, so I'd love to be able to move quicker in the hub, please, Bioware. Next, the motion blur is frankly quite sickening for me, and turning it off does improve my overall gameplay a lot. I don't know if it's my rig or my monitor or just a demo optimization at this point, but moving your mouse around to view things with motion blur turned on is a no-no. And speaking of optimization, Anthem is the first game I've played on this computer, this gaming rig of mine, that tells me I have a bottleneck. My i7-6700K CPU usage is at 98% average, higher than my GDX 1080 GPU, which is why most of the recorded footage looks like shit. That'll teach me for not buying an external capture card. Slightly subjective territory here, I'm also not a big fan of the UI. I think it's clunky and overly confusing at first on the PC, with all the different menus hidden behind more menus, and you can navigate normally with enter and escape or by clicking, and you have other assigned hotkeys like Y as well for some reason. I love a simpler UI if I'm being honest, and this one reminds me of Dragon Age Inquisition's interface mostly, which while isn't bad, takes some time to get used to. Now all these issues and annoyances aside, let's talk about the good stuff and where I've had the most fun with in Anthem in this demo. Firstly, the gameplay. Moving around in your javelin for exploration, combat, and the flying is tons of fun. Across all three game modes, Bioware advises that you set matchmaking to public so you can play with others, and I concur. The Stronghold this demo was by far the best time I've had in here and it ensures you utilize everything, all your weaponry and synergy with the other archetypes. The matchmaking is decent, ensuring your party of 4 always has a good composition like a Colossus for a bit of tanking, two rangers maybe, and a support like the Storm or Interceptor Javelin. The gunplay is easy to get a hang of, even for a non-experienced shooter player like myself, and it's not hard to get engaged. Enemies have weak points like the standard go for the head if their shields are down, flanking or a flammable tank behind them, for example. And when exploited, it rewards you with XP for playing smart. The synergy between players is also fantastic. The Colossus can block with a shield at the front. I can throw a frost grenade somewhere from behind to freeze a cluster of enemies so that the storm who's hovering somewhere above can nuke them all. And there's various combinations for combat that's worth exploring on different javelins between players. The final boss fight of the Stronghold involves taking down this big nasty with tons of health, and I do appreciate the effort of making it interesting with several phases, and not just a boss with a health sponge that you just shoot for 10 minutes, like most of these games tend to do. I would love to see more mechanics for other boss fights though in the final version, just to shake it up a bit, because in this demo we only have access to one Stronghold, so it did get a bit tiring doing the same one over and over again. Anthem's loot and itemization doesn't feel all that grindy for the most part, and if you're playing on challenging modes, better drops are easily obtained for crafting or ready to use once identified back in the fort. Each piece of gear comes with additional passives too, like increasing your ammo count or the health of your shield, and that's pretty much RNG, so there's plenty of ways to build your javelins the more you play, and using your weapons and your melee attacks in game modes will grant you feats like legendary enemy killer, and there's weapon challenges too, like kill X amount of enemies with your Warren gun, for example, and all of this incentivizes you to play better, so at the reward screen at the end, you get more XP and bragging rights, of course. Now, if you know Bioware, you know these guys are storytellers. Unfortunately, this demo doesn't share a whole lot of that, so I haven't got anything much to comment on, but we can talk about the delivery through aesthetics. So I'll start by saying, Anthem looks great on the highest settings. Character models are not Mass Effect Andromeda levels, I'm happy to report. 
and dialogue delivery and facial animations for the most part are very decent, though I've come across a few in the fort that needs improvements. Here's a sample. For years, I had heard of a type of shaper relic that was able to amplify and augment the qualities of other objects. Never encountered one, never knew anyone that had, but thanks to the Elysian manuscript, I think I know where one is. Right here in Bastion. And you think it'll amplify and augment the power of my javelin? Precisely. The soundtrack is also fitting, I suppose. I have no idea what instrument that is, which makes the ooh ah ooh noise that seems to be the recurring anthem of the OST. See what I did there? Other parts of anthem, like the Cortex, which acts as the codex in-game, where you can read up on lore tidbits about places, items, and more when you discover them, are familiar RPG staples that Bioware have included in most of their previous games, so it's nice to see that return. Javelin cosmetic customization is also pretty in-depth, and you can change the look, the fabric material, and the colors of multiple areas of the suit, which is really nice, and it'll make players who put time into it stand out for sure. So before I wrap this thing up, how about a bonus section, huh? Here's a list of things I'd like to see improved or added. Firstly, underwater movement is damn near impossible for me. Unlike flying, which takes a while to get used to, but once you get the hang of it and how to manage your heat, it becomes second nature. Underwater, however, things can disorientate you very quickly. I get that it should be hard to navigate a metal suit underwater, but maybe make it more bearable? And this one's really subjective. It's my inner MMO bias coming through. I would kill to have a minimap in match modes, especially for strongholds. When you enter it, it's instanced, but opening up the map doesn't do a whole lot, and if you're lost or way behind your party members, it sucks trying to figure out where to go. And I know I'll get shot down for this, but I like in-game text chat. Nobody this demo has used voice chat. Not once over the many stronghold runs I've done has anyone uttered a single word. And sometimes this caused problems, especially during mechanic phases where we should all stand in the middle of a platform or picking up and delivering stuff. Sometimes there's just one guy who's brand new and or clueless and a quick chat message would fix everything. That's just my two cents anyway. Players will argue I'm sure that a text chat ruins the solo immersion for RPG and yeah, I understand that. So let's have it turned off by default so that those of us that want to be social and want to grow community can do so as an option. Anyway, that's going to do it for the vid, you guys. That's my impressions of Anthem from the VIP demo weekend and I've been playing a ton. I got to level 50 and I'm in full rare gear except for one slot on my ranger. I've unlocked my second javelin, which is the Colossus, and I'll say again, I've had quite a good time considering the amount of pain in the ass issues this demo has given me. If you're considering buying Anthem and you're watching this, Oh gosh, I don't know what to tell you, honestly. I'd be worried about the issues and the bad stuff, definitely. I don't know if Bioware can get their act together before launch. But beneath all that crap is a pretty fun game, and I guess I'll say this. A full-priced Anthem is a lot better than a full-priced Fallout 76, in my opinion. So, let me know what were your experiences from the VIP demo if you've been playing it and share your good, bad, and ugly things about Anthem in the comments section below. Hit the like button if you love food, and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more vids, and get notified on all my latest uploads. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian, and I thank you for watching. For example, people are saying that having dragons, more dragons now on the Elder Scrolls Online is going to be a little lore-breaking, because... According to most people, there hasn't been a ton of dragons in this time period. And, you know, when we play the Elder Scrolls games, getting all the way up to Skyrim, it's been mentioned a couple of times that there's only one 